my god! Oh my god! She should be here! Because justice wasn't served. They didn't prove that nothing to do with me with this shit. I do think they proved it. The jury thought they proved it. I think they did quite a good job of proving it, as a matter of fact. Judge Peter Cahill didn't waver when he handed down the mandatory life sentence. There will be no possibility of release. The only thing I wish I could have is, is my daughter back. And that's something I can't have. It's nothing I can get, but this is a, a, you know, a touch of satisfaction. This is the story of Monique Baugh, who was lured to a home showing. She was then kidnapped bounded, and then shot point-blank in the face and in the torso. The killers proceeded to her house to try to kill her live-in boyfriend in the presence of their two children. Hello and welcome to Twisted Crimes. Subscribe and hit the like button for more stories. Based on this case we will be heading to Minneapolis, Minnesota. The state known as the land of 10,000 lakes, the most in any state in the United States. Minnesota is also famous for being the home of Mall of America, the largest shopping mall in the United States, and its outdoor activities, including hiking, camping, fishing, and winter activities. Monique Baugh was born on October 17, 1991. She was 28 years old who worked with Chris Lindahl Real Estate. All right, so we're here in the condo in Bloomington. Very nice. They kept this one up really good. Everything's super pristine and clean. Go. Monique was a mother of two young daughters, who she put first in everything she does. Her friends described her as a young, kind, loving, beautiful mother, daughter, and had a blossoming real estate career and her daughters were her world. Monique lived with her boyfriend who was the father of her children, Mitchell Momo. He is an up-and-coming rapper. They lived their lives as modest as they could. Monique was pretty much the life of both sides of the family. That was my sister's pride and joy. That was my sister's only child. Michael Williams is Ba's uncle. On New Year's Eve, 2019, Monique was scheduled to show a home to a prospective client in the Maple Grove area. Usually, Monique's appointments were made directly with the real estate company she works for. However, this appointment was different. This person had called her personal phone number, she was a bit worried but went ahead to meet up with the lady who had called her. Upon arrival at the home, she went into the house and minutes later an unknown man was seen going into the house and few minutes later, she would be kidnapped and dragged into a U-Haul waiting outside driven by another unknown person. The driver then takes off out of the driveway with Monique still in the back of it. Fast forward to an hour later, at 5.30 p.m. on December 31st, police responded to a shooting on Humboldt Avenue in the city's north side. Upon arrival, they found Mitchell Momo, who had been shot multiple times, but was able to tell authorities that a masked gunman had entered the locked front door using a key. He said the intruder, who was wearing a black-colored mask, with only one hole for both eyes, fired multiple rounds. He was able to flee from the gunman upstairs to his one-year-old son's room where he started yelling, I am dead already. My babies are here. His three-year-old son was on the couch while all this were going on. Police retrieved a number of silver 45 caliber casings at the scene, as well as the key the gunman used to enter the home. The key belonged to Monique. Roughly an hour after the home invasion incident, a gunshot detection device tipped police off to another shooting near a back alley on the 1300 block of Russell Avenue North. There, they found Monique, who had been shot twice in the torso and once in the face, at point-blank range, she was unresponsive and her hands were bound with tape. Detectives recovered more 45 caliber shell casings same as the one use in the home invasion. And witnesses mentioned seeing an older tan-colored Buick drive down the alley minutes before the shooting. A U-Haul truck with Arizona plates, was spotted near the scene of her boyfriend's shooting, was also seen in the area. Police later found Monique's black BMW, they found a single pink press-on fingernail. Using a neighbor's surveillance footage, cops were able to pull up all what had happened at the home which Monique was showing, they saw the U-Haul, and they took it from there. Investigators soon traced the U-Haul, which had been seen at both shootings, to a business in Ramsey County. Inside, 
They found zip ties and four pink press-on fingernails, which matched the one found in the home at which Monique was likely abducted. The truck also reeked of ammonia. A rental agreement for the truck led police to two men, who admitted they rented the van to Barry in exchange for heroin. Police arrested Barry Davis on January 2. Searching his 2002 Buick Regal, investigators seized 13 pouches of heroin from the center console, as well as the mask police suspect Barry wore when he allegedly shot Mitchell Momo. Monique Ma was abducted from a fake home showing in Maple Grove, then put into the back of a U-Haul, and later found shot multiple times in a North Minneapolis alley. Search warrants say that a masked gunman also went into the home where Ma's boyfriend and her two kids were and shot her boyfriend, injuring him. Those search warrants also lay out a lot more information about who was involved in the shootings and why. The search warrants filed by Minneapolis police say that Ba's boyfriend told police the only person he could see doing this was a former friend of his, identified in the warrant only by initials. According to the warrants, Ba's boyfriend said he and that friend had a falling out about a record deal. Ba's boyfriend also told investigators, according to the warrants, that he was recently flashing a lot of money on social media and that he thought a lot of people think that he had snitched and might be after him. The search warrants say investigators received information from two confidential informants that the friend had put a hit on Ba's boyfriend, the alleged hitman, a man recently released from a federal prison in Kentucky. Court records say he was eligible to serve the rest of his sentence at a re-entry center in Minneapolis. He was instructed to take a Greyhound bus from a prison in Kentucky to Minneapolis, but never made it. Court records say police found him at a home in Moundsview, where search warrants say they found a 9mm gun in his bedroom. The person the search warrants point to as the gunman is back in federal custody on unrelated charges. But according to Minneapolis police, the person who those warrants claim put out the hit is not. So far, there are no formal charges against either person. And a question that remains unanswered in all of this is why Monique was abducted and killed when the warrants detail a plot against her boyfriend. Barry, a convicted drug dealer, has extensive rap sheets stretching back 20 years. He was convicted of manslaughter in 2002 and has a slew of past narcotics convictions, according to separate court records. Police was also able to tie another man named Cedric Berry to the case and he was also charged. Police uncovered the person who placed the false call that lured Monique to the scene, and it was by a lady known as Elsa Segura. Cedric Berry and his friend Barry Davis are both now charged with the kidnapping and first-degree murder of 28-year-old realtor Monique Baugh. According to complaints, the men worked with Elsa Segura, who called Baugh on New Year's Eve and set up a fake showing at a home she was selling in Maple Grove, where that afternoon, Baugh was abducted by Davis and Barry in a U-Haul, the complaint states. A U-Haul was later seen outside Ba's home in North Minneapolis, where, according to complaints, a masked man used her key to enter and then shot her boyfriend multiple times, with their three-year-old child on the couch nearby and their one-year-old child sleeping upstairs. An hour later, Ba was shot and killed in this alley about a 10-minute drive from her home. According to warrants, on her wrist was duct tape, which had the fingerprints of Cedric Barry. The warrants add that Barry was also found on video surveillance buying the phone that was used to set up the fake house showings. And in his car, investigators found a black colored mask. And when police arrested Cedric Barry in January, warrants say Barry Davis was in the area and fled when he saw officers. And a search of his car revealed a new set of two-way radios. Now today, a judge set Cedric Barry's bond at $2 million. A jury convicted Davis and Barry of first-degree premeditated murder and kidnapping in Monique's death, in addition to attempted second-degree murder of Monique's boyfriend, John Mitchell Momo. Barry Davis and Cedric Barry, both 42 years old, were sentenced after being found guilty. Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! A mother's raw anguish in a Hennepin County courtroom at the sentencing hearing of Cedric Barry and Barry Davis for the murder of Monique Baugh. <laughs> she should be here! <laughs> Monique's mom, Wanda Williams Baugh, gave an absolutely heart-wrenching victim impact statement. Her daughter was 28 and had two young daughters of her own. My daughter came face to face with pure evil that New Year's Eve. Prosecutors argued at Davis and Barry's trial that the men were trying to get to Monique's boyfriend who had a beef with the drug dealer on New Year's Eve 2019. So Davis and Barry and some associates staged a phony house showing so they could kidnap Monique, who is a real estate agent. After using her to find the boyfriend, 
They brought Monique to a North Minneapolis alley in a U-Haul truck, executed her, and dumped her body. Monique did not have to die. I didn't have to throw her out like she was garbage either. My baby was so precious, so precious to me, to all of us. And I'm asking you, Your Honor, to please use your power to make sure they spend the rest of their miserable, insignificant lives in prison. Before the sentence was handed down, both the defendants maintained their innocence. I hate you guys had to go through this, and I will always pray that the truth comes out. Because justice wasn't served. They didn't prove that nothing to do with me with this shit. I do think they proved it. The jury thought they proved it. I think they did quite a good job of proving it, as a matter of fact. Judge Peter Cahill didn't waver when he handed down the mandatory life sentence. There will be no possibility of release. The only thing I wish I could have is, is my daughter back. And that's something I can't have. It's nothing I can get, but this is a, a, you know, a touch of satisfaction. The 30-year-old from Fridley was indicted by a Hennepin County grand jury in May 2021. A jury convicted her in the kidnapping and murder of realtor Monique Bao. Two men, Cedric Berry and Barry Davis, are also serving life in prison in this case. Elsa Segura set up the fake home showing in Maple Grove that led to Bao's kidnapping and death. Judge Peter Cahill today agreed that Segura was just as responsible as the men who killed her. Here's Esme Murphy. Elsa Segura made the phone call that lured Monique Bao, a mother of two, to the phony showing. A jury found that made her guilty of first degree murder and kidnapping. Bao's mother agrees. Your Honor, the defendant, she actually could have been a hero. She could have been a hero. She could have warned Monique. Wanda Williams Bao says Monique's six year old recently told her this. Legend said to me a couple weeks ago, she said, she said that she wants to die. And I said, no, baby, why would you say that? And she said, because I want to see my mommy. Throughout the proceedings, Segura showed no emotion. As a teen, she survived the 35W bridge collapse. Monique's mother said she did not deserve another chance. I am asking that she get life without the possibility of parole. No more chances. Judge Peter Cahill agreed, sentencing her to the same life without parole sentence as Cedric Berry and Barry Davis. The Hennepin County Attorney's Office later announced that a 37-year-old Lyndon Wiggins has also been convicted by a jury of aiding and abetting the first-degree murder of Monique, as well as aiding and abetting attempted murder and kidnapping. The motive for Monique slaying may have been linked to a suspected drug rivalry between Mitchell Momo and Barry even though Mitchell denied this to have been the case. Court documents reviewed by Twisted Crimes show Mitchell Momo was found guilty of drug possession sometimes in 2018. Michael Williams is Bob's uncle. That should have never happened to Monique. It's sad that she lost her life for somebody else's decisions in life. Our sincere condolences to the friends and families of Monique Baugh. May Monique's memory be a blessing for her family and for all who knew her, and may her life and death be an inspiration and a turning point towards justice and increased protection for gun violence survivors. Please stay safe and see you guys in the next video.